I've never spoke about this on my channel before and that's because it's not particularly something that I've put too much thought into. And then this morning when my thought process ran through the plan of action for today, I was like, that might be something that somebody else might have not thought of and it might actually help improve the way in which they train. So what I'm talking about is my setup to training and how I go about staggering the muscle groups that I train and when I train them. And it's basically built off of sentiment and the way in which I'm feeling. So typically I'd say it's probably quite fair to say that most people feel slightly more anxious or in a bit of a lower mood on a Monday morning because they might have a lot to do at work, they might have a lot to come back to after a pretty hectic week the previous week. They may have a hectic week ahead of them and it may just cause them just to be feeling a little bit like, ugh, which means that the way in which I approach my training is to ensure that on a Monday, when I'm more likely to be feeling in a lower mood, to make sure that I'm doing things that make me feel as good as possible. So I'm gonna be training the muscle groups, whether that be back, chest or shoulders, on a Monday, because I enjoy those the most. So let's just say hypothetically that my chest is my favorite muscle group to train. I'm gonna ensure that I'm training chest on a Monday, because I know that A, that's gonna help me get in the gym and train because I'm gonna be looking forward to it, and B, will help balance out the general mood. So if I'm training chest on a Monday, then on Tuesday, I'm gonna to wanna to train my back because I'm gonna have DOMS probably from my chest, which means that I won't be able to train my shoulders efficiently. And then Wednesday, I'll probably have a rest day, some cardio. Thursday, I'll finish off training the third muscle group that I haven't, which was in this case gonna be shoulders. And then on Friday, when I'm feeling my best, I've got the weekend to look forward to, I've got some exciting plans in place, I'm gonna be training my legs because legs cause me the most amount of discomfort when training them. They are the most rewarding muscle group, in my opinion, to train because they stimulate such a large proportion of muscle on the body. It releases lots of endorphins, which obviously make you feel good. So they are very rewarding. However, they are very uncomfortable when you're training them, probably for the same reason, because you're putting your body under a lot more stress. That is probably my least favorite muscle group to train, just purely because of the discomfort during the session, which means that on a Friday, when I'm feeling good, I don't mind coming in here and doing something that makes me feel a bit uncomfortable and puts me out of my comfort zone because I'm in a good mood because it's Friday. So basically, I guess what I'm trying to say is I try to balance out the way in which I'm feeling with the things that I have planned for that day. So if I'm feeling a little bit low, I wanna to try to increase that mood by doing things that I enjoy. And then on the back end of the week, when I'm more likely to be feeling good, I'm gonna balance out that again by doing something that I'm not so much looking forward to. And so the aim really is that when I start my week, instead of starting the week on a low and then rising to a peak at the end of the week, I'm trying to create a nice balanced feel throughout the whole week. And I just wanted to stand here and talk about it. Those of you that are quite attentive might have noticed that there is a barbell in the background because finally my barbell and plates arrived for the gym, which means today I can have a proper leg session for the first time. I'm gonna be getting on that, doing some squats. I haven't done squats on a barbell for probably a year and a half to two years, so it's been a very long time. I'm gonna take it easy, I'm gonna see how we go. Get used to the equipment, because of course, this is gonna be the first time that I've used that setup. Hopefully things have been set up correctly and I can actually get the barbell off of the rack. But yeah, we're gonna get cracking this morning because I have a very busy day ahead of me. are absolutely relentless at the moment they are demolishing all of the grass seed that went down so what I've done is I've brought a bag of wheat and I'm gonna go and stick some feeders around the garden to try to distract them from eating our seed and give them something better to eat on this afternoon we'll probably see maybe a dozen females as well working their way through it all 
Good evening. Lydia and I are currently in the nearly finished kitchen. You'd have seen this on Lydia's channel on Monday. Lydia. And uh, yeah, we're currently just enjoying a beverage. This is Friday. I bought myself a pint with what can only be described as, well actually it's gone down quite a bit now, but it was quite an embarrassing head. Um, <laughs> probably about two inches. <laughs> but I did think that. It, <laughs> me, I'm like, is that ice cream? Currently cooking up a dish that I do all the time, which is a pasta bake. Oven's on. I'm going to treat dish. myself to a biscotti. A biscotti? Yes. That's a breakfast thing. Yeah, but I haven't had one in a very long time, so... And then tomorrow the guys are here grouting, and that's hopefully going to be all done by the afternoon at latest, I'd say. Mm. But everything's looking really lovely, we've got some new lights in, the decoration is well on its way. I think uh, we were just saying then, a bit of paint, a bit of furniture, and a couple of little bits of electrics that need to be tidied up and finished off. And we're good, aren't we? Yeah. We're starting to really see it, feel it come together right now, which excites me. Obviously the skirt has just got primer on it, that'll be the same colour as the rest of this. But yeah, it's good. And I've also just popped the curtains back on in the living room. So many of you will probably recognize this room from before and see that there isn't a huge amount of change. I think when this gets dressed properly and all of the furnishings and stuff come into this room and it's complete you'll notice a lot of difference. Um, but we were really pleased with the room before as I mentioned so it was only just some tweaks anyway really wasn't it. It's had a fresh look of paint, new carpet. That centre light's being changed isn't it? All the lampshades? Mm. The lampshades are being changed on that. This room and the kitchen are nearly there. Yeah. I'm nearly there. Um, so yeah, it's going to be really exciting in probably two weeks time when we have them fully complete. Most of the hallway will be done mm -hmm. and we'll be delving into the bedroom. Mm. I think the hallway is going to come along really quickly as well because if you think about it, they're going to be finishing off the floor in there all next week. The floor's only going to be in here Monday. That area is going to come together really soon. It just won't be furnished until the bedroom, bathroom, toilet and utility are done. I hear you. But it's looking much more... What's the word? Much more finished. Just the foundation. It's because it feels, the depth of the walls. Yeah. Because the cladding is, is basically created. The detail of it is like this depth. The, yeah. The almost. It feels like you're right. It feels finished, even though the room's not finished. It felt like an empty void before, and now the colour. I was honestly, when I saw the colour going on, I was like, it's so dark. Yeah. But it doesn't feel dark. No. It doesn't, and in the daytime it feels even lighter. Like yeah. I was saying to Liz, at night time this floor looks quite yellow and warm, but in the day when you have got all of the artificial light that's creating that warmth, which I, I actually yeah, really yeah. like the warmth in the I evenings. I want the warmth in the yeah. evenings. But in the daytime it's got that kind of like dusty, ashy sort of, kind of yeah, yeah. look to it. It's honestly, it's, it's nice. Really and also, is. the grout that will be going in the floor will be a slightly lighter shade. That's really well. important, yeah. And I think so the grout is so important. Put everything in. What I've learned from my office and obviously some of the other rooms that have been getting done is the room is designed to complement each aspect. So it's not about having your favourite colour. Yeah. Your favourite what you just like yeah. yeah things you love it's, it's all about... got to work together yeah. that's what that's the, that is the biggest mistake in interiors that can be made is you just go with what you like yeah and actually because like you and colours like you walk in and you'll go like, I'm not sure about yeah. this I, I think every colour that's gone on the walls in this house yeah bar this centre island yeah I've I've questioned yeah I've been like oh like the hallways right now just mm. are not doing it for me. No. But I just trust the process. Yeah, now you're learning. Well, I only trust it once I get proven yeah. to trust it. So like my office was an example. Like I just trusted it and it paid off. And I can already feel 
I think this area of the room in particular, where you've you can got see the, the, the wicker. light and the wicker, the wicker, seeing the wood in the room, mm. it really helps give a little bit of feeling to how it's going yeah. to come together, and obviously the lights as well. And eventually, when we end up changing the sockets in the house and getting rid of the chrome, I think that again is going to really help yeah. pull the house together. I wish I could have justified it. Yeah, it's quite a big expense, but do you know what? But we might this, is, this, is, this is how things go. Like yeah. we, you can't do everything at once, no. and we've got so much going on, both in and out of the yeah. house. Things have to be delayed, and it's something to look forward to. Our garden project's going to be you know, five I'm to ten years. I'm excited for the patio. Yeah, the patio's going to be nice. The patio, and because our garden is so beautiful as it is. Like once all of the lawn grows back in for where the kitchen garden is, really, our garden is beautiful. But having this patio done properly, yeah. that, that's and a function. It, that's what I mean. Yeah, like just have it as a space that is sociable. When we open up these doors and it's just an extension of this room, like when the fire pit is there and there's sofas out yeah. there because it's going to be really social. You remember when we had the sofas in here? Yeah. And we used to just sit here and look out. Yes. Now we'll actually be able to go out and have our coffee Coffee's in, in front of the fire. Yeah. What, looking at the beautiful wall in yeah. bloom, it's yeah. just going to be absolutely and amazing. Then, for example, because you have the dining table just here, this table could be dressed with like a buffet of food, it's a lovely exactly. spread, which is something we really enjoy doing. Cheese and yeah, do like a grazing bread. table. The grazing table, that's the word I was looking for. <laughs> and then have people sitting outside yeah. you know, on a summer's evening. It's really functional. As yeah, well. it just it look, you know those people that have an extra long yes. apex, and so they've got the dining area, and then next they have the seating area. Yeah, it's essentially what we're. It's what we're doing, but ours will just be outside for summer. Yeah, which I think is uh, that's what I'm. I think if we about. had exactly what we wanted, we would extend out yeah. further, wouldn't we? Yeah, and that might be something that we look to do in 20, 30 years if we're still here. Yeah, if if we get to the point where we're like. We need a whole new kitchen, like this one is. Yeah. Does that happen when you get this kind of kitchen on? Yeah. But it's like 20, 30 years down the line. Like but it's we'll, a bit bashed about. Yeah, that. we'll get to a point and we're like, this space doesn't work for us anymore or something yeah. like that. And you'll just be like, let's do a new kitchen. Yeah. More microwaves. <laughs> <laughs> Stalls are looking good as well. Yeah, I love them. They make me very happy. I was literally just saying to this, I feel like every single time I vlog, I'm always cooking this dish. <laughs> But it is a strong favourite amongst the house, aka okay, I mean lids. Pasta bake, cheesy pasta bake. Today we've got some breadcrumbs on it. You like it, don't you, babe? I do, yes. Oh, look at that steam. You happy with the pasta? It looks lovely. I'm not going to tell you anything because if I ever <laughs> critique your food, I can't, I'm not allowed to tell you the truth. Listen, Yeah, chef's kiss. <laughs> well, good afternoon. So Lids and I are just about to go out on a little adventure to the garden centre, which we haven't done in absolutely <laughs> I that, ages. I love that that's a little adventure nowadays. Yeah, Usually I know, yeah. we'd be sailing the seas in Bora Bora, <laughs> but no. Now a little adventure is yeah. the garden centre. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it because I haven't been to a garden centre in ages because it's not been gardening season. But because we're coming into spring, I'm going to be going there today to keep my eyes out for a scarifier, some lawn fertilizer and moss killer. And what else do I need to keep my eyes out for? Also, I'm going to have a look to see if there are any specific feeders for the pheasants, because obviously we're going through a bit of a tricky moment where they're eating the grass seeds. And I've had some amazing suggestions over on Instagram where people have been suggesting basically to um, net the area, fence off the area. It's a large area. I mean, a lot of work just to get that covered and protected. So what we're going to do is we've, I've already bought on Amazon some feed for them, some wheat feed, and I just need to find out whether they need to go in special kind of feeders or whether I can just put them in bowls or something to distract them from eating the grass seed. So I'm going to keep an eye out for those as well. Good stuff. So we have arrived to the garden center. It is absolutely packed. It is a weekend after all. And it's the only place that is open. So. Oh yeah, as well, yeah, forget.
Well, we're back in the car, and I would say that that was a very successful little trip. Did we use our voucher? No. Oh my God, Ali! <laughs> we do that every time. <laughs> so my mum brought us a voucher <laughs> for Christmas and we just went and spent more than the voucher's value and I forgot to use the voucher. <laughs> oh well, well, we'll buy more stuff from there. It's just we have to use it. Yeah. We never use vouchers, we always forget and yeah. they're not paying. So anyway, I feel like we had a successful trip. Lydia got loads of seeds, she got loads of stuff in the greenhouse. I was going there for the lawn primarily and I was going to, I think I mentioned, look at scarifiers and some kind of moss treatment. And I was talking to one of the guys in the center and I showed him our lawn um, and I discussed obviously the woodland that surrounds the lawn um, and the issues that not just Lids and I, but also our neighbors face with moss in the garden because it's obviously so close. And he was like, you're gonna be kind of fighting a losing battle, which is what one of my neighbors had said to me anyway. So I think that the advice was, Give your lawn a treatment, but if you scarify it, it's just gonna be a hell of a lot of work and you're gonna keep on coming up against the same problems and it will look a mess for some time. So I've brought a product that feeds the lawn, reduces the growth of moss, and will hopefully increase the amount of grass growth, which means that as the grass gets more compact, there is less space for the moss to grow. So the idea is, is that you kind of force the moss out by overgrowth of grass, I guess. And it also gives it some nutrients, I'm assuming, to give it a bit of color. So not only are we gonna be sort of combating that moss problem, we're also gonna be giving it a little bit of color. Um, so it's gonna look a little bit nicer and richer, which will be really nice as well. Once that treatment's been down for a month, uh, three to four weeks, I'll then go out and give it um, another treatment, which will hopefully keep on feeding and continuing to promote the growth of the grass. And then that way we will have not a perfect lawn because that's not what we're looking for, is it? No. To be honest, Eva, we don't want a perfect lawn because it needs to kind of naturally flow into the woodlands, but it will just be a little bit more lawn and a little bit less moss, <laughs> which is what it is at the minute. There'll probably be lots of gardeners that have been like, yeah, been there, tried that, doesn't work, mate, but we'll see. I'm gonna give it a go. Um, and it's very hands-off. Can I ask a question? Yes. Would you like to get Starbucks coffee? Not particularly fussed for that. Okay. If I'm honest. What? Considering we've got to go straight back out, I thought you might want a coffee. Yeah, it sounds like a lovely idea, but I'm fine. Right, we've just got back home and I put all of the things that I picked up for the lawn into the shed, which is currently in absolute state, by the way. A lot of building materials being left in here. Of course, I'm gonna be looking after the lawns during March, April, I guess, as well. So I got this easy spreader from Evergreen just to help distribute it evenly. And it'll also make it a little bit easier than doing it by hand. And then underneath this new log carrier bag that I picked up from S Church and Gardens. It's going to be really handy because it's fabric and these tubs that I was using to carry the wood in and out of the house. Previously they kept on snapping in the winter when it got really cold so this is a perfect solution. Over to the feed I have this miracle Grow uh, no rake system which is like I said earlier to remove moss and also help feed the grass to make it go greener. That gets applied first, and then after three or four weeks, I'll then go with Safe Lawn, which is friendly, which is great. And then I'll basically use this just to give it a little bit more feed. And then again, this is supposed to help prevent moss. I'm not expecting to get perfectly green grass and to remove all of the moss. This is just to help it because at the moment I would say that it's probably 50-50 and I'd like to get it to more of like a 20-80% split of moss and grass. Obviously grass being the most dominant. So this is what I've picked up. So we've got the feeder, the spreader, and then the log bag. So a nice little successful trip to make my life a little bit easier. And then if you want to go and see what Lid's picked up over on her channel, she's documenting that over there. But yeah, a very good trip, but the state of this shed, it hurts me. It's absolute tip at the minute. I've got all sorts of crap going on in here. This is the most untidiest state it's ever been in. I'm telling you, look at the state of it. Literally can't move in here. 
it's an embarrassment so you know what we're going to be doing in an upcoming vlog we're going to be tidying out this place because it needs it so desperately and we're now getting into the season of gardening I think that it's safe to say that we are outgrowing the shed and uh, we need to have a serious sort out and then we need to really think about how we're going to be moving forward with the shed department because we need log storage we need bin storage and we need a little bit more space out here so i think we might look to put a new shed in but obviously we've got so much work going on out in the garden and also in the house it's quite low on the priority list hopefully soon we'll be able to expand a little bit and create a bit more room because I keep on buying gardening equipment and there's nowhere for it to go. Well Lids and I have come into the kitchen this morning and the grout is starting to dry through nicely colouring up. You can see it's a nice lighter shade. I think last night when we were in here it was still a little bit wet which meant it looked a little bit darker but in the areas where it's starting to dry through where it's been in the sun you can see it's actually really really coming together and uh, a very nice complimentary grout. But this morning we're going to be doing a little bit of gardening. I'm just currently cooking myself up breakfast. I've got a spinach omelette on the way, so I'll get busy doing that. And then, you know what we need to do, Mr. Porter? Little mousy? We need to get the coffee machine back in here, don't we? Yes, we do. Ooh. Mm. Look at your tail. Look at your tail. We see it. Whilst breakfast is cooking, one of the jobs that I needed to do yesterday that I didn't get around to doing was get the coffee machine back in the kitchen and as you can see, you can't see actually, it's a mess in here so I'm going to sort it out. This section here, this shelf needs to be completely tidied up and then we've got our kitchen back up and running again because we've got the toaster back in here, the coffee machine back in here, we've got use of the hob and oven. So it's all starting to come together. It's a really, really lovely day today. So yesterday you saw we went and picked up some lawn treatment. I'm gonna read the instructions and just double check that it's all okay. And I think I'm gonna get out there and apply it, get the ball rolling. Um, you can actually see, I'll turn you around in a second, where the moss is because it's a lot more vibrant in yellow. And you'll see that it's pretty dominant out there. So let's take a look. So as you can see, all of that yellow amongst the green is moss. And that is what we're gonna be tackling, hopefully over the next sort of four to eight weeks. Well, I definitely just went to run a time lapse and completely forgot to press record. But I did just clean up the coffee machine and the cubby hole in the cupboard to uh, slot it back in. So that's back in. I've still got to get all of the rest of the bits in there as well. But breakfast is served, so I'm gonna take a little break. Eat my spinach on it. Sounds like we've got a very meow bengal somewhere. Oh, you want the other window opening? Right, I'm just gonna get cracking with the lawn and I've checked the weather. We're due rain today at 3 p.m. which makes it the perfect time to be putting this fertilizer down because to activate it, it needs to get wet. So it means I don't have to water the lawn, it's gonna be done for me. So that's the result. I was gonna get Porter out and gonna get him to run around in the garden with me, but I've checked the back of this particular product, not the safe lawn stuff, this uh, first product that we're putting down. And it says keep out of reach of children and pets. So he's gonna unfortunately be staying in the kitchen for his safety. I'm gonna get busy doing that, but before I do, I need to set up my spreader. So I'm gonna quickly get that built now, make sure if there are any settings to control the distribution, I'll get that set up and then we'll get cracking in a time-lapse, busy getting this lawn sorted. I now have the evergreen easy spreader set up. I've set it to level eight because that's the suggested level to put it on. I have the miracle grow ready to take around. We're gonna get spreading. So that's what the lawn is looking like at the moment. Got this moss growing through. 
you want to come out and play just before I start? Little run around? Uh, come on in. Come on, come on, good boy. Just before we go, you have a little run around, mate. Good boy. Well, I just quickly did a little bit of raking just to uh, get rid of some of the leaves to make sure that the product actually managed to get onto the grass. So that's just been complete. I really would have loved to have got the lawnmower on. Also does a great job of hoovering up any mess on the lawn, but you can't mow the lawn before or after this treatment. So I've done the best I can the time I have. I just brought the wheelbarrow over and I'm gonna now get busy spreading this on and that'll be me done now for four weeks. Also, first of the blossoms, I think this is called I need to check lids. It's something like a European plum tree. It's never fruited. I don't know if it ever does fruit or whether that's just the name of it, but this is a good sign that spring is on its way when this little bad boy is blossoming. Also, this is one of the trees that we moved from over on the lawn there and we put it into the woodland and you can see it started to bud, which is a really, really good sign as well. It means that it survived the move. It's always a bit nerve-wracking when you move a tree this big, but it looks like it's going to do well. Do you want to follow? So I have completely underestimated that lawn. I think that I've probably got another 100 square meters of coverage that needs to be done. And that doesn't allow for the side garden and the little square patch at the end of this lawn that needs to be covered as well. So I'm probably gonna pick up another 200 square meters of feed. And then I also probably need to buy another four boxes because I checked I actually have 80 square meters of coverage per box so I only have 320 square meters of that and this is going to have taken up 600 square meters so I need to double up on the lawn safe as well but good to know Lids wanted to head into a local garden center today anyway so I'm going to use that as an opportunity to also go with her and collect some more of this product hopefully they've got it or something similar uh, I'm sure it wouldn't matter too much if it's a different product so should have done a measurement before I left really shouldn't I I guesstimated are you ready to go to your first garden center oh yeah your first little outing to a garden centre. Just looking at the uh, greenhouse section, nice and rustic. Liz wants some of these. Anything else got your eyes on? Mm. By the little greenhouse. It's very cute, <laughs> yeah. isn't it? Like a mini version of mine. Yeah. So just a quick look at what we just picked up. So I've got more of the safe lawn. I also found a product that does the same as the Miracle Grow, apart from it says child, pet, and wildlife friendly. 400 square meters, so I've got plenty. So that is good to know for the future. Moss Master from Westland um, and then of course got that again and then we've got some little picky bits so we've got a couple of uh, Snowdonia cheeses lemon and sea salt crackers we've got some pate and then for dinner this evening I picked us up a mac and cheese which I'm looking forward to a couple of wisteria plants and most importantly I ended up walking away today with the prize purchase the wheelbarrow and that is going to replace the one that was broken and I got it in a black so it's just a little bit more subtle in the garden because the silver one was really popping out there. Well I've just finished doing the lawn treatment. Lydia is currently working on dinner having some fresh loaf, yeah. pate and cheese 
probably going to get some balsamic vinegar out as well. More. So it's been another weekend in the garden, which I take a lot of pleasure in. And uh, I'm really looking forward actually to seeing if we can kind of combat this grass enough to make it a little bit more presentable. Um, it'd be interesting to see if it does get any greener as well, because it's supposed to. I'm not really that bothered about it being much greener. The grass is, is fine. The greenness of the grass is just the moss. So we shall see. I'm not gonna get my hopes up too much because um, nobody has particularly filled me with confidence with removing moss from grass, but it was worth a go and I'll keep you updated on the progress. So anyway, I'm gonna wrap the video up here. I hope you have enjoyed it. And if you have, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and I'll be seeing you on the next one. Peace.